data governance. If your company deals with data, then you probably run into challenges not knowing where all your data lives, not being sure who owns it, or even worse, not knowing if you could even trust it. You have sensitive information in emails, critical reports buried in SharePoint. That's where Microsoft Purview comes in as your single source of truth for discovering, organizing, and protecting data access for your entire organization. We're gonna log into Purview, do a little bit of discovery, see how to get there, see what buttons to click on, see where to navigate to see our data, to see our items. And in future videos of this series, we're gonna actually start doing a more deep dive into these individual items. But in this video, we're just talking about getting set up to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign into purview.microsoft.com. This is how you just get into it for the first time. And it says, welcome to the Purview portal. When you log into Purview for the first time, this is what you're gonna see if you have access. So this is down here, there's data map, data catalog, information protection, data loss prevention. There's many different types of solutions that exist. I could also see this huge list of solutions. If I click the solutions button, you see this list gets quite a bit longer. I can even hit this explore all button to see even more. Now, do keep in mind that for this initial video, uh, we're mainly going to be talking out the data, talking about the data side of things, which typically is going to be just kind of the data catalog and the data map. You see this kind of recently navigated to items here. We're going to dig into more things later, but those are the main things that we're going to talk about. But I digress. As we look at the portal here, we see there is different sections like core that has audits, compliance alerts, data map, etc. There's risk and compliance section. There's a data governance select section, data security section, and of course, a knowledge center with resources within the resources at the bottom here. For this purposes of this video, we're going to be sticking on just a couple of items that I really wanna show you guys that's really gonna go a long way with tracking much of our data compliance needs, which is gonna be in data catalog and data map. If I go to data catalog here, or I can go to solutions and go to data catalog, either way works. Inside of this data catalog, I could see many different items. So I could search the entire catalog for different items. I could, I could look into Azure, I could look into Fabric. Here's a quick access of just a few various different items that are in the quick access for recent section. I could also go over here on the left side, I could go in the browse and look at different source types that are available. So in this purview instance that I have that contains Fabric items and Azure items in it, I could see all of the different categories and what I have in them. Again, a lot of this stuff is very basic examples that were stood up for testing purposes. So there's, these don't have a ton of depth in them. But for instance, if I wanna see my different Azure subscriptions and see some details about these Azure subscriptions and what is contained in them, I can do so quite easily just by kind of drilling through and taking a look at it. You see this Azure storage account is associated here. Uh, I could go back to data assets. I could go back to, sorry, source types. I could go back to something like Azure Blob Storage, see any Blob Storage instances that are available. That one was for Databricks. I could go to, you know, Azure Data Factory, see what's there, my ADLS Gen 2, I, Azure SQL Server storage account. I could even look well within my Fabric workspaces. So if you have a Fabric workspace enabled, you can start diving and seeing what is in there. If I click on this Fabric workspaces, I could really start seeing what's going on. Notice I have a ton of different Fabric workspaces available. A lot of them are for teaching and training purposes. But if I just click on like this one as an example, I know there's some stuff in here that we could look at and I could even just start saying, hey, what is currently contained in this specific Fabric workspace? I could go into something like Data Factory. And if I wanna view the different data pipelines that are in it, I could see that there are a few. I could click on this data pipeline and get more information about it from within this Fabric workspace. It's gonna show a description, if there is one, there wasn't one made, a hierarchy that's involved with it, you know, what is the pieces of this hierarchy? This is currently kind of in the, the the second step of a hierarchy, just as workspace at the top level, and then uh, this specific pipeline is underneath that. I just not super deep, there's not a ton into it. I could look at the different properties of it, all the different properties, who was created by, what the date time it was, any particular contacts or history that's gone along with it. I could even click on this open in Fabric if I wanted to, to open this directly inside my Fabric workspace to view this item if I wanted to do so. So even directly from here, instead of looking at individual source types, I could look at the collection level of different items. I could see I have two different collections currently within this purview tenant that I have. I can look at the, the, the higher level, which is purview Pragmatic Works, see all the different items that are within it, 
and know within this catalog, there's all these different dimensions. There's, you know, internet sales items, source schemas, source tables, fact tables, purview storage, all these different items that exist. And I can see that there's a sub collection, which is fabric, which we saw just a moment ago. I could look through and start applying filters on here. Like I just want to see, I don't know, just data pipelines as an example. Here's the data pipelines that are associated here. I could also look at my sub collection of fabric, click on that one, see data pipelines here. Are there any data pipelines? Yes, this one got in just purview, right? So I could see all this kind of items that exist in my data catalog by collection or by source type. I could also go down to business glossary and see any glossaries that may exist. Currently, I don't have any glossaries set up, but this is a good way where you could put, you know, easily searchable items in there. So if you wanted to search for something specific like dimensions, you know, it'll pull up all your dimensions. Or if you want to put facts, it'll pull up all your facts or pipelines, pull up all your pipelines, whatever it needs to be here. You could set up glossaries for that. Also data sharing, any shares that are incoming and outgoing are all manageable right here in this data sharing section. Notice that this specific example that I have, I don't have any shares on here just because again, this is just for testing and built up just for examples. But you could manage all the different shares, shared sources, shared invites, all of these different things that are available. Notice down here at the bottom, it says related solutions is a data map. So that's kind of what I was talking about. We're mainly focusing on the data centric side of things as we get introduced into purview. So I'm gonna actually go up to solutions and show you guys here another way to get to data map. There's many different ways to get there. It's right here, it's on the left side. Send that button I was just showing you a moment ago. It's back at the homepage. But I'm just going to click on solutions and go to data map. And in the data map is a kind of similar way to look at the stuff that we were looking at just a moment ago. And in the data map for a purview pragmatic works tenant and in the sub uh, section, which is fabric, you can see there are different numbers of assets, data sources and scans that are available to them. An asset is, if you're curious, it's like a metadata object that's in purview. It could be a real data source, like a file or a table, or even a department or a process. And assets have everything Purview needs, basically to help you govern, understand, manage your data, et cetera. And we could view all those assets by clicking on this button that says assets and see every single asset that exists here, all, all 33 of them. Notice it's one through 25 of 33, but I could always go to the next page and see the rest of them, of course. I can go back to my data map, I can click on data sources. Here's all the different data sources that are current be, currently being used in this purview instance. I can also click on scans and see all the different scans that happened. A scan, if you're curious about this one, is basically it first it establishes a secure connection to your data source, whether it's blob storage or SQL or Azure Data Lake storage, whatever it is. And it ingests all technical metadata that's like asset names, schemas, file sizes, et cetera. All that stuff is all classified as metadata and it applies any built-in, any sensitivity rules that you could configure in the scan itself. And you can see here that we've ran like 10 different scans in total over this whole purview instance here. And I could look at the fabric item as well and see that there's only six assets, one data source and four scans total that was ran on this. In this data map on the left side, we've just been looking at the domain. So the technical term for this right here is this is the purview pragmatic works domain, which is currently the default one. It's the only one we have here. So this is the map view for data sources. In here, we can see that it's showing one collection and I could click on this one collection and hit the plus sign to kind of drill in at the hierarchical level on this to kind of see what all three different data sources are being used in this collection. So I could see that for the purview domain, purview pragmatic works domain or instance, whatever you want to call it here, is using Azure Data Lake Storage and PW Public, whereas Fabric, I click the plus sign of that, is just using Fabric Tenant as a data source. So in this map, you can kind of see a lot more stuff that's kind of going on there. You can also look at this on a table view instead if you just wanted to see it a little bit more basic way of the lineage of how it works and the domain that it's involved with. There's this monitoring tab where we could see all the different scans that have happened in the, this one is specifically in the last 30 days, obviously, as it says, there's been 10 scans in the last 30 days, all 10 succeeds, no cancel, failed in progress or anything like that. Just to kind of give you a status on all of those. You go into source management and actually start setting up the scan rules. Don't need to dive into super, a lot of details on that, but uh, that's gonna be the main kind of coverage of the data map itself. And I kind of want to touch on one more thing here in a data source, actually. If I click on a data source and look at it a little bit more in depth, 
You can also see here that it has the collection path of where it's stored, the source hierarchy, where it is. I could see all the different failed scan runs here. You know, I don't have to go in that monitoring tab if I want to see exactly what's going on. We see all the different discovered assets that happened here. You can really see a lot more individual detail as you dive into these things. You really want to start governing and seeing where, why, how all these data sources, assets all exist in your environment, all stored in this one easy way to see all of it. What really inspired me to talk about this topic of purview within Azure and Fabric is that one of Pragmatic Works offerings is called a quick start. And what a quick start is, is we go help companies get stood up for the first time in a sustainable way where you could set up, you know, maybe your first Fabric instance or your first Power Apps instance, and you could set up Dataverse. Whatever it is in the kind of Microsoft space that you need help setting up at a larger scale, we could spend quite a bit of time helping you get that set up and managed. A lot of times when we are wrapping up, the customer is like, well, how do we go on from here? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to manage everything? So at the end of the engagement, we typically start setting up Microsoft Purview to guide them along that path where, hey, you don't need us to come back in here and check this. You know, you're going to be able to sustain uh, your business by yourself without needing us. You're going to be set up for success. So let's set up Purview so you could do any type of monitoring, governance, security checking, health and insights, whatever it may be, all at your fingertips right here in Microsoft Purview. And that has led to a lot of success as we start doing these types of engagements with our customers. And it has been a really awesome topic. I don't think Purview gets talked about enough in the data space because data governance is easy to kind of ignore in this world until you run into a problem. That's kind of where a lot of companies fall apart. They don't think they need data governance until something bad happens and then suddenly they needed it yesterday. So we're going to go down this path in this YouTube series where more and more of these videos are going to come out, where we're going to start diving a lot deeper into Purview, see all the different capabilities that are available and go from there. But that's going to be all for this video, guys. My name is Nick Lee from Pragmatic Works. If you want to see more, make sure you check out our website. Make sure you check out our other YouTube videos. Follow us on social media, whatever you got to do. We are here for you. We want you to succeed. I want you to succeed. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed kind of getting your feet wet a little bit with data governance within Microsoft Purview. This series, we're going to start diving into a lot deeper topics and aspects when it comes to Purview and governance and uh, really get a deeper understanding of how we can use this for success at your company. Once again, my name is Nick Lee from Pragmatic Works. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.